In this video, um, I will talk about 3D printing, which uh, is something that you will have hands-on experience with in the lab. Uh, we talk about FDM or fused deposition modeling, which is the most common uh, type of 3D printer that you can find. Stereo lithography and laser sintering. So let's start with an overview. Rapid prototyping. We have talked about it a lot by now, but uh, let's give a professional definition. These are techniques to quickly fabricate a scale model or a physical prototype using computer-aided design models. So models designed in by computer-aided design. Um, and 3D printing is one of the most common uh, rapid prototyping methods, which we can also use in microfluidics. And then uh, there are three types uh, that we will talk about. There are much more than this, or many more than this, but uh, we focus on three uh, types of 3D printing. Fused deposition modeling is what uh, you will find everywhere, basically, nowadays. Uh, you have a, a spool of filament, and this filament is dispensed uh, through an extruder head, which is heated up to the temperature where this uh, plastic filament melts. The filament itself is uh, solid plastic, and the extruder has gears pushing the filament into the hot, uh, the hot head or hot end, and that is dispensed out onto first your platform and then onto your structure layer by layer, building up your uh, desired structure. The, the printing head itself is hung up on a three-axis robotic frame. Stereolithography works with liquid resin that is photosensitive. And uh, there are multiple ways to do this, but uh, in any case, what you need to do is uh, project a light selectively onto the surface that you want to cure, or onto the spots that you want to cure. One 3D pixel is a voxel. We call these voxels because uh, they are not 2D pixels, they are 3D voxels. And so you point your light to some point in this uh, photosensitive resin through a glass or polymer uh, bed, and uh, there it gets hardened or cured. And uh, spot, by, spot by spot you draw your structure and layer by layer you print out upside down your uh, desired uh, printed structure onto a platform. So fewer mechanical components, slightly simpler overall system, but the formulation of the resin is more complicated and also uh, uh, not so nature friendly. But uh, we will get to that later and you will see in the labs uh, or in the lab. Laser sintering. Uh, in laser sintering, you have a powder base, which um, can be plastic, can even be metal, which uh, you you sinter or you melt them together technically by this laser beam in the spot where you want it to be uh, formed into the voxels. And uh, like this, you draw your structure again, layer by layer. After that, you remove the powder and uh, there you go, your final structure. And yeah, just so everyone remembers, a voxel is a 3D dot. So fused deposition modeling. Filament is heated, pushed through a nozzle, moved in three axes. Wherever you want to print your voxel is where the head moves, and then it's uh, printed line by line, layer by layer. Um, you can also use more than just one material. One very common way to do it would be that um, you print support structures from a water-soluble material, and you print the part itself uh, from a non-water-soluble material. For instance, uh, polyvinyl alcohol and uh, polylactic acid. Polylactic acid being the non-soluble, polyvinyl alcohol being the soluble. But for this you need uh, two printer heads. And this one is an example of... Uh, this one is an example of a filament-based uh, 3D printer. The good thing is, these are cheap. Even this 1200 is not true anymore. Now it's um, around uh, 
Well, it depends on the size that you want to get, but uh, a European brand, Prusa, sells their uh, larger printer for seven, eight hundred, smaller printer for four hundred, three to four hundred, depending on whether you buy it assembled or in a kit. So, let's say you can begin with a decent printer around three to four hundred euro. The material is cheap. This figure is still accurate. That also shows the the way of development. Uh, the, the the consumables are not getting cheaper. The printers are, uh, as as more and more of them are produced. This is the effect of mass production. And uh, I need to emphasize that there are now recycled plastics available too. So you can get the solid filament from recycled plastics, which is uh, of course recommended. It's good for printing larger structures and printing structures for mechanics. So gears, handles, levers, uh, enclosures, and so on. But for microfluidics, not really the best. For Lebona chip, in general, for biomems in general, definitely something that will, you will use in your career if you should choose to stay in this field. Uh, if you want to print enclosure for electronics or if you want to print mechanical parts for the user to interface with or interact with, you will use FDM, but not for chips, uh, chip printing. For that, SLA is much better. SLS is not really for, uh, for microfluidics. So you cannot print microchannels with FDM. You can, but it will not be very good. SLA or stereolithography, however, is a lot more um, suitable for printing microfluidic chips. And uh, if you write me, I can give you the, the link to one of our review papers where uh, we focused exactly on what can be done, or what is the limit of this technology, how good microfluidic chips you can make with uh, stereolithography. So just contact me and then I will send you the link. Uh, there are two ways of doing this, digital light projection or, uh, or uh, stereolithography with laser. Um, in the older systems, uh, typically the light projection was done by a micrometer array or a mirror array, which, uh, which was digitally uh, uh, set to, to the right angles and uh, there was a, a mercury lamp producing the, the light. In more modern systems there is a laser which is uh, or a laser beam which is uh, directed to your uh, uh, printing surface to selectively cure the structure that you want to print. And in cheaper systems they use a UV LED system where you either have a UV screen to cover up certain pixels and uh, expose the rest, or a LCD screen to uh, cover up and expose, or it is the screen itself that produces the UV light. Both are uh, viable and both are quite cheap. From China, you can get a, a small uh, SLA printer for uh, with this UV LED technology for 200 euros. And the uh, resin itself is also 40, 50 euros per liter. So this one here is an example of, uh, of a printer. This is the printing platform. And this is your printing part that is extruded out from the bed of liquid resin, which has a transparent bottom. And through this transparent bottom is where uh, your light shines through. Uh, it can also be in, a, in an upside down orientation, but usually it's uh, the other way around that your part is being printed upside down. And uh, this is a good resolution. Voxel size can be as low as, nominally, can be as low as 25 microns, although that is not really possible uh, in reality to make because these voxels can uh, melt together or they can uh, collapse together. Uh, printing speed is okay, uh, a couple hours to uh, a day of printing. Imagine that every time you print a new layer 
it takes time to expose the new layer and then the platform needs to move up and down after every layer. So if you have a thousand layers, then it's a thousand times a couple of seconds or even uh, uh, a minute, depending on how long the exposure time is. You can get a good prototype strength, but uh, most of these plastics are brittle, although there are formulations in which uh, they are more flexible. So it depends on uh, what is the material selection from the producer. The cheap materials, the, the ones you can get 30, 40 euros a liter, they are brittle and break quite easily. So here's a note about the materials. Uh, it is com composed of, uh, of uh, an organic solvent, the, the photo initiator, uh, the, the dye to give it a color. And uh, usually it's not uh, very eco-friendly. However, nowadays there are some uh, plant-based uh, resins that claim to be more eco-friendly. There are also resins that after curing are biocompatible, but by default they are not. So don't use it at home, unless you have a garage and you have good uh, uh, aeration, so you have a good airflow. And yeah, the, the variety of plastics is quite wide, not as wide as with uh, filament-based printing, but quite wide still. Um, for a professional printer, cost is quite high. Resin cost is also quite high for a professional printer. However, for a non-professional printer, for consumer uh, applications, this is down to 30, 40 euros, and this is down to 200 euros. So you can get your own, but don't put it in your room and definitely don't put it in your kitchen. And also, uh, your parts need to be post-processed after printing by uh, immersing them in isopropanol, which is not something you want to have at home. Uh, so, selective laser sintering is another uh, 3D printing method where you, uh, you selectively uh, melt the, the powder that, that you, uh, you use as the, the basis for printing, and by that, draw your structure. It can uh, produce um, high quality, high strength plastic products, but it can also produce metals. So technically you are able to print a gun, for instance, with uh, laser sintering and it will be able to survive up to a few shots. And you can even print the receiver from uh, this technology. It has been done. Um, I'm not saying you should print a gun with this. I'm just saying it is uh, possible and it shows the strength of uh, this printing method. So if you want to print a prototype enclosure with buttons that work, with handles, levers, with mechanical parts that need to function but cannot be printed with filament printers, then think about SLS. But this is also not good for printing microfluidic chips because uh, your print is going to be porous. So, it has a good resolution, it is the fastest of all the printers, uh, it is also the most expensive, but it can print complex geometries in a single process without supports. There are various uh, finishes that you can apply, and it has excellent mechanical properties. So, comparison. Uh, and, and these are updated, but uh, still talking about professional uh, quality. Uh, this is not professional, this is the, the cheapest FDM printer, so take it with a grain of salt. This is uh, um, not an excellent comparison, but a comparison nevertheless. It can get down to this, 150 euros for a Chinese uh, FDM printer. The 30 euros material cost is accurate for uh, the low tier um, uh, filaments but uh, think about 30 to 50 euros for uh, premium quality and one kilogram material. Uh, the resolution cannot really quantify, depends on your printer, but uh, can go down to 150 microns. Uh, here it can go down to 25 microns. And uh, with SLS, I'm not even able to say. 
Internal supports are needed for FDM printing, but if you have two printer heads, then uh, you can take care of this. Uh, otherwise, uh, you need to print the supports from the same material, and that makes uh, printing uh, um, devices with, with internal arches uh, quite a pain. So this is good for large structures and, uh, and is quite cheap. So even for professional printers, uh, FDM printers, this cost applies. But let's say rather than 150 for a good comparison, let's put here around uh, 800 euros. That's a professional printer. Professional uh, SLA printers uh, start at around 3,500. And uh, the resin for the professional devices is quite expensive, but you can also uh, get away with uh, the 30, uh, let's rather say 30 to 60 euros here. You can uh, get away with that uh, uh, cost. If, if you really want good results, then uh, 60 euros per liter is more realistic. So slightly more expensive than FDM, but still uh, reasonable. Supports are not needed, and it's good for printing small parts. SLS, I cannot say the cost of uh, the material because uh, it's not really available in any catalog. You need to buy it from the manufacturer. Uh, the machine itself, that's available. It's around 12,000 euros uh, for one professional machine. And you can print basically anything, but uh, Beware, beware that uh, microfluidic chips will be porous, so they will not be uh, watertight. And yeah, the resolution is excellent with uh, SLS. Now, um, why is there such a hype around uh, 3D printing? Because admittedly there is, and yes, uh, the maker community, open source hardware movements and so on. The reason is that uh, it can greatly simplify production and production of uh, customized uh, components on the small scale. And more than this, it can um, make manufacturing digital. So you don't have to physically send your parts to wherever. In our uh, small company, where uh, we work on uh, level a chip type uh, uh, devices, point of care devices, uh, my colleagues are in Germany, in Leipzig, I'm in Tallinn, Estonia, or in Budapest, Hungary, and I make my design, I test it on my printer, or I print it and test it on my printer, and then I send it to them, they print it, and they can test it the same day. I don't have to send anything, there's no transportation, no logistical fees, and no impact on the environment. So this is digital manufacturing. And the same applies to other technologies, such as um, prosthetics, for instance. That is one field uh, where, to get it, from um, a company would cost a lot, would cost uh, upwards of a uh, thousand euros to, to get the custom part. Instead of that, you can have your uh, 3D printed open source uh, hardware uh, prosthetic, which uh, makes it more available to, to people all over. And also take note that for, for instance, uh, filament based 3D printing, you only need the material, you only need to stock one kind of material. You don't need to stock different types of materials uh, to be able to 3D print different designs. You need to only stock one, and then the digital design determines what your product will be. And it is highly customizable. So it will have, uh, in our field, in uh, biomems, in Lebona chip, in microfluidics, it will have a great impact, and it will play an important part going forward it already does, but generally in uh, the industry, you can expect it to play a major part in this uh, decade. So it helps to produce individual prototypes. It can help to upscale to production, to test uh, new designs and uh, go through that phase of uh, rapid uh, design evolution. And it can bring advanced tools to a wider audience uh, in a large part via open sourcing. It can also decrease logistics costs 
and uh, help produce customized hardware. So if you would like to start out, then um, I recommend going to this website and uh, checking out the printer options there. They uh, have some nice advice on, uh, on which one to choose. So, uh, but uh, if you really want to uh, get something that truly works for you, then uh, buy uh, a Prusa from the Czech Republic. It's not very expensive. It has a very good community support and, uh, and it is from the European Union. So yeah, you can support our local industries. Um, in our department, you can find uh, a milling machine if you can find somebody who can do the cam and uh, operate the machine for you. Uh, 3D printing is much easier to use. So if you should do your uh, thesis with us, then uh, you can use our uh, 3D printers. We also teach you how to do it and, uh, and train you in the use of uh, 3D printers. You can get started by performing the lab exercises in this course, but uh, if you come to us to, to do your thesis, then you can learn more about uh, 3D printers. And uh, we have more than uh, the Envision tech now. We have uh, various 3D printers that you can hear about in the lab. So in this uh, video, I talked about um, three different types of uh, 3D printing, FDM, stereolithography, and laser sintering.